Hey there, today we're with Brad Kidd Jr., who's national champion and on Team USA. And we've got Mick Howell, who's a two-time world champion and the professional target setter here on this course. Can you talk to us a little bit about what you're gonna teach us? I'm just gonna explain a little bit about um, target setting and why we uh, do certain things, why we use speed, distance, and angles to make this more interesting and a little bit more difficult. And Brad? We're gonna focus on really paying attention to things like where we're gonna set our eyes, the target's line of flight, so we can try to identify what the target setter is doing and you know make sure we've got it figured out so we can break the bird. Here we are at our first station. Mick, can you talk us through this one? Yes, this station we have a tower shot. As you can see, the tower's behind me. If I felt like I needed to make this a little bit more difficult, I might put a little downward angle on the target. If you look at the machine, you can see that it's slightly pointing downhill. What this is gonna do, it's gonna make the shooter shoot high and over the top, and also because it doesn't lose any speed, it's gonna make it a big lead shot. Here at our first station, we've got a tower shot. Now, one of the things that's critically important on a tower shot is identifying the line of flight, all right? What we've got is a target up in the air in the sky, and we don't have much of a visual reference, so it can be very difficult to find that line. So I really gotta pay attention to this bird and what direction or what line that bird takes in the sky. The other reason line is critically important, we've got a very fast target at a crossing angle. So the lead's gonna get big. Now the bigger the lead, the more important line is. If I've got a target I'm shooting right at, it doesn't matter where it's going, I'm shooting right at. As we increase that forward space, all right, if I'm a little off the line, I'm way off the line. So if a bird's flying down hard and I'm getting out in front of it, but off the line, I'm gonna miss by a mile. So I've really gotta identify line when I've got you know big lead on a shot. We do, we do have that on a tower here. And and again, finding that line is difficult to do. So I just want to really pay attention to the view bird and see if I can focus and, and really understand what that target's doing in the break zone so I know where my lead needs to go. Now let's take a look at a view bird and see if we can find that line in the break zone. Pull. Right in here is where I felt like I can take that shot. All right, when I'm watching that target fly, I like to think about a clock face. If I, if I set a clock face up and I've got 12 o'clock being straight up, six o'clock on, on the way down, I feel like that bird's going to some, somewhere between 7.30, 8 o'clock. All right, so now I've got a good idea or a good reference of what the direction is on that bird. And again, we've got a relatively fast crossing shot, so we're gonna have to be out in a pretty generous space and what I think of as about 7.30 on a clock face. Let's shoot one and see what it looks like on our shot cam. So at the hold point, I got the gun in the right position there. I established the gun underneath the target, which was on what that line was going to become and it was able to, to break the bird. Now let's take a look and see what that looks like if I'm not paying attention a lot and I'm simply bringing the gun even with the target and see what happens. Pull. Target came out, I established the gun position even with the target, which was above that line of flight, kept my eyes on the bird, felt like I had a good move, saw it well through the shot, but still missed. So, you know, if I misinterpret that line, not only am I gonna miss that target, I may be confused as to why and not be able to figure it out before the station's over. Mick, here we're at the next station, so walk us through what you did on this setup. Okay, so the angle of this target makes it uh, appear to be crossing early on in its flight when you look at it leaving the machine. But when you're actually shooting it, it's a quartering target, and that's why you shoot ahead of it. 
Here we're going to be shooting a very narrow quartering angle target, but because of our proximity to the machine, it's got a very aggressive angle change uh, as the bird comes out. So as we're trying to connect to this target, it's a very fast, close crosser. Because of that, we're not going to be able to get our eyes all the way back into the machine. We're going to have to decide or figure out how far out we need to look to be able to pick up the bird visually and maintain a good focus on it all the way into the kill spot. All right, we're gonna take a look at one of these targets and I'm gonna try to figure out where it is I need to look to pick this bird up visually. Now, ideally, I wanna look as close to the machine I can and pick up the bird as early as I can. But again, because of our proximity to this machine, it's gonna to have to be out away from the machine to some degree. All right, let's take a look. Pull. I looked way too close there. I looked in here about five yards in front of the machine. The bird blew right through my vision. I saw it come out, lost sight of it, picked it up way down the road. That's not going to lead me to make a good connection with my muzzle to the target. All right, so I'm going to have to try something else. I'm going to look out a little bit farther and see if my eyes pick it up. Pull. That was much, much better for me. My eyes had to move out quite a ways. I've got to look out to here, which is probably a good 15 yards in front of the machine. Now, what happens for me, the further away I look from the machine, the bigger I look. So what I'm allowing my eyes to do is come into what's called soft focus. I'm basically looking big to a zone. So I'm looking out to this general area here, but I'm widening my, widening my focus out so I still catch that, that flash coming out of the machine peripherally as early as possible. But I really like looking here, basically what I'm trying to establish, where do I need to look for my eyes to not get beat, for them to be able to grab and have the target, for the target to become the clearest, the quickest. That's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for where to set my eyes. Now that I've established where I'm gonna look, I wanna figure out where is it that I'm gonna start the gun. Once I've found my viewpoint, my visual pickup point, I can find my hold point. And I do that again by trial and error. I know I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna get my hand out and almost simulate like I've got the gun in my hand and feel myself make a good connection to the target. If I hold my hand too far out along the line, the bird's not gonna get to me. I'm gonna feel very disconnected. If I come in a little bit too close, the bird's gonna blow by me and I'm gonna feel like I'm chasing too much. Now I do like to jam up my hold point a little bit on this target and feel a little bit of a chase to the bird. I'd rather be a little too close than a little too far out on a narrow quartering angle but let's get out here and see if we can get a feel for what it's going to feel like uh, and uh, you know hopefully have the right hold point pull all right where I had my hand was a little tight and and just based on feeling that I know I'm going to move the gun out a couple inches so now I feel like I've got a good setup for my eyes and my hands on where I'm going to set my eyes are going to be in here my hands are going to be slightly outside of that I should be able to connect to the bird have good control and kill it right here where I'd like it What happens if I allow myself to look too far in on this target and don't get a good visual pickup, it's just going to be a very bobbled connection, all right? Like I said, I'm going to see it, I'm going to try to move on that flash, but I'm going to lose sight of it, so my hands aren't going to be able to make a very efficient move to the bird. So we'll show you what that looks like on the shot cam. Pull. You can see what happened there. My eyes came too tight. I didn't have good visual control of the bird. I had a, a really uh, out of control move to the bird and I wasn't able to get connected. So my hands just flew by and I ended up missing out in front. So finding a good look point, a good hold point, and a good connection to the target is vastly important if you want to break this bird. We're at the last station here. Mick, can you explain to us how to shoot this report pair? Yes, we have here two targets, an outgoer and an incomer shot on report. The first target is a target. It's showing a little bit of face and going away quite fast. We show a little face so that it's a little bit more visible, but still needs to be shot quickly. The second target is coming from way out there, coming a long way and it's quite slow. This will make the, the shooter become more aware of the muzzle and measure the lead and create a miss. All right, let's watch Brad teach us how to shoot these pairs. 
On this station, we've got an outgoing target and an incoming target. Now, with the outgoing target, we're trying to attack that bird. We don't want to get it. We don't want it to get too far away. So there's not much worry about seeing the bird too clear, too quick, or looking too hard, too quick. With an incoming shot, the bird's in the air for a long time. We want to be patient, shoot it at its closest point. So we want to be careful and not look at the bird too hard, too early. And what basically the way you can think about it is your vision kind of sharpens up. As I begin to look hard at that bird, it's almost like I see a basketball then a softball, then a baseball, then a P. I want that fine point, that, that sharp point, that sharp focus on that target for the moment I fire. If I look too hard too early, I'll bring that sharp focus in too, uh, far too early. And what happens is, is I've seen it well, but well before I want to take the shot, typically my hands will slow down and I'll miss behind. Now there's other things that are important. We gotta establish a good hold point. With the first shot, I'm looking for an early connection. So I'm looking, where do I need to hold to get on the bird right away? So the target comes out and I make a good early connection. With the second target, I'm looking for a much more patient hold point. When do I need to get on the bird to be there the right amount of time leading to that leading to that patient break zone. Now, we've got narrow angles here. So even though this first bird's got a lot of speed, it's not gonna be a ton of lead. You can easily be baited into thinking this bird's got a big, big lead because it's pretty far away, it's really, really fast. Gonna take some space, there is a little bit of angle here, but less than uh, some shooters might read. Now, same thing with the incoming shot. The bird's towards the end of the flight, the bird's lost a lot of speed. So it's, it's gonna be some forward allowance. The bird does have some angle at the end of the shot, but it's not gonna to be a great big lead. So establishing good hole points, reading line and lead on this shot is very, very important, and then how we're going to use our eyes, how we're going to try to pick up and kill this first bird relatively early, how we're going to be in, in, patient in engaging that hard focus on the incoming shot. Let's look at a show pair and see if we can find a good hole point, a good kill point on these targets. Oh, bang. Bang. With that show pair, I was actually able to find exactly where I want to start the gun, start my eyes, I had a good feel with the target, I know where I'm going to kill them. Let's take a look and see what that's like on our shot cam. Pull. Did exactly what I wanted to do there, had a good hold point, bird came out, got on that first shot nice and early, very patient with my connection on the second target, ramped that focus up as I came into the kill spot. Now let's look and see what a common mistake may look like. Again, like I mentioned, uh, you might read that first target for more lead than it has. The second bird, if you try to get on that bird too early and look too hard too early, the hands are gonna slow down. And we'll see what that looks like on the shot cam. Pull. The result's a miss.